Coming up right now, Florida signs one of the country's most restrictive social media bans for minors, and other states are set to follow. Also coming up, it's Italy's newest culture war as it bans lab-grown meat in a bid to protect prosciutto and the people who make it. A little bit later, Lizzo is donezo. <laughs> the three-time Grammy winner says that she'll be quitting the music business because she's tired of being dragged by public. We will explain coming up. Daily Flash starts right now. Get ready for trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash with your host, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. The fun starts right now. This is Daily Flash. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Jackson. I'm Mitch English. We're welcoming you to an hour packed with Daily Flash goodness. Mm -hmm. We're so happy to have you here. We'll be checking in with Matt Doolittle in just a moment. Maddie, how you been, man? Life good for you? You know what? You ever feel very proud of yourself when you go to the dentist and you have a perfect checkup? Oh, bravo. And the, thank you, thank you. Bravo, and the doctor Maddie. comes in and he's like, you floss? I go, yes, I keep the picks in my car. It's, and then she, nice. granted the wife yells at me because the picks are all over the car, but I keep them in my car, so I, I floss regularly. I brush regularly, and he came in, x-rays, all's good. And I'm like, you know what? I like that better than almost my college professors giving me A's on my <laughs> test because this was a lot harder. Now, the question is, how long has it been since you've been uh, to the that's dentist? That's a good question. Two and a half years. Okay, all right. <laughs> that's actually a really good, good That's yeah. it, that's, yeah. Good Are you, you the guy that leaves the floss picks uh, outside the car in the no, parking no, lot? No, no, okay. I, I believe it, I have a little thing in the side of the well, car, and thing. when I go to the car wash, because I have one of those memberships, I yes. vacuum them up. And very I'm very good. good about picking them up. I have a little dispenser for those. It's the pick with the floss in it, the mm -hmm. little hook thing. And you just go like this, and it's like a Pez dispenser, and it comes right out. And uh, uh, But I'm the guy that throws them on the ground. You are. That's okay, yeah. that's you. That's your calling card. <laughs> yeah. I keep wondering who that guy is. Uh, so check this out. A couple is getting uh, roasted online for charging their wedding guests $2,500 to attend no. their wedding. Now, the guy got the invite, and at the bottom it said, no. please click here for payment. And he thought, well, maybe that's a donation to the honeymoon or the wedding registry. So he decided to go ahead and he clicked on it. Come to find out, it was a, a one-time fee of $2,500 to attend the wedding. The couple wanted the guests to pay no. for their wedding. No, no, so no, no. he went ahead and he's like, all right, it's my best friend, I've gotta do it. He went ahead, he <laughs> paid the $2,500, believe it or not. He said he and his, his wife got to the wedding. Once they were there, they had to pay out of pocket for all the drinks, for all the tips, it wasn't even cash. and for the food. Oh, yeah, well, open bar rather. Yeah, open bar. So oh. this couple made, God only knows how much money off of their wedding guests to have that their wedding. Oh, all right, that's tacky. For, I mean, that, right? that's extremely tacky. I'm, a, I'm actually going to a wedding uh, tonight. My, my niece is getting uh, married. And uh, I, I, you always, you know, they'll have like the list of stuff you want to get, you know. Huh. Sometimes like, well, there's no way I can afford that. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> yeah. But to say 2,500 bucks uh, is, that's a huge investment. You're investing in that marriage. I want something out of that marriage. I want something from that, that either the marriage or the uh, or the wedding. One or the other. Well, you know what I'm saying? 2,500 is a mortgage payment Oh, no kidding, people. right? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm sorry, but if you can't afford to have a wedding, then don't have it, one. 100%. Yeah, and it, you know, I can understand that that is, is a, a, a absorbent amount. And if you can't afford yes. that, say, okay, all right, if you want people to pay, maybe make it 250 bucks. And, but then That's also- Expensive. It, well, oh yeah, yeah. great. Just to be able to show up there. Right, and I'm supposed to buy you a gift too? No, 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 you won't let that again. <laughs> That was your gift. My presence was your gift. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay, we head now to Florida as we jump into trending news. They are now going to have one of the country, the uh, one of the country's most restrictive mm -hmm. social media bans for minors. It's all under a new bill. Now, the bill is actually going to ban social media accounts for kids under 14 and require permission for 14 and 15 year olds. Supporters in Florida hope that this bill will withstand legal challenges as uh, well because it would ban social media formats based on addictive features such as notification alerts and autoplay videos rather than just on the content. Several states actually are considered similar legislation. And if you don't think it's bad, even Facebook suppressed information that they knew that what they were, uh, that kids at, at a young age would 
be addictive to these things and things that we can do to get them addictive uh, to Facebook coming back. And again, I take it back to that incredible documentary. It's called <gasps> Social Dilemma. I was just thinking of that. Man, you got to watch this thing. I, I, I mean, it came out last year and it talks all about that. To the very end, if it's the same one I'm thinking of, because you've got one of the former execs of yes, Facebook on and, and Google and Twitter, I think, saying, I will not allow my kids on any social media platform whatsoever. Now, if they're saying that yeah, and they're the ones who created it and who are behind the scenes, that should send a strong message. You know, we have age restrictions on anything that's, uh, you know, they, you know, alcohol is addictive. Uh, it's also, uh, you know, can do very damaging things, obviously, as we know that, and the behavior as well. Why can't we give those same restrictions for the kids? And do kids, they say that there is a... Uh, uh, it slows down their development and their social skills if they're always on their phone at a, an extremely young age. I mean, there's all kind of research. You don't need me to go on and, and tell you about it. You've heard about this research. So there has to be something done for that. Will 14-year-olds still get on social media? Yeah. Probably. Maybe there should be a better way that Facebook and these social media um I know that there's some sites where I have to upload my my uh, ID. Oh, see, now so that makes me a little nervous too. But kids don't have ID, so how do you right. how do you you know judge that? You fake an ID. Fake an ID, what? or if you don't have an ID, you can't sign up. I yeah. Know. When I was growing up and just hit in high school was when AOL Messenger was starting to be a thing, and that caused enough problems yeah. in the halls and everything. Like, hey, what'd you say? Why'd you yeah. say that to the? the I can just imagine what this has done to that generation, yeah. and and we've got a, we've got schools in Florida that have banned cell phones altogether, and they say they've seen a a rise in the grades, and the the kids are actually talking because there's teachers that go down the hall and they're like. I don't hear the kids talking anymore. Yeah. They're all on their phones. Well, think about the stuff that they're exposed to. And and I'm assuming that those kids have access to everything that's on Facebook, so they're not limited to certain things. I mean, things that are live streamed that should not be live streamed, I mean, violent episodes, fights on, on TikTok, you name it. All these challenges, it's ridiculous. And they're also the ones, the town criers, that, you know, they want to be the first to report it. I mean, I, I saw on April Fool's Day, uh, so many people putting fake things yeah. out like oh, that. that was... and, and like people were like, you know, anything I saw on on a Facebook or whatever, I was like, I, I got to check that. That, that, yeah. that. That's not right. That's not real or whatever. And nine times out of ten, it wasn't. So, uh, but what I'm saying is the fact that kids might not realize that, and then that information goes out could mm -hmm. be, you know. Anything like oh, if you drink salt, you'll get healthier. Who Thank knows God, what right. happens? Right. Uh, and now for some international news: Italy's government has moved to ban the production of lab-grown meat in an effort to protect Italian culture and its agriculture sector. The country became the first in Europe to ban artificial meat. Factories who produce lab-grown meat will face fines of up to one hundred sixty-two thousand dollars. Under the new guidelines, cauliflower steaks are also off the menu as the country moved to ban the use of meat-related words to market vegetarian products. Products. Lawmakers say words like tofu steak or veg prosciutto reveal use labels associated with meat to sell products oh. with vegetable protein. Okay. So it's misleading. Lab-grown meat allows the production of food for uh, food from animal cells, removing environmental and ethical concerns related to livestock for many. Many see the move as one that would protect Italy's heritage of producing salami and prosciutto. And, and Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> Here's oh, the thing. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, no, I, you know, I'm good. I'm glad that, that yeah. lab-grown meat freaks me out. But there's, you know, you watch all these space movies and, and you know, they're flying into another world and it takes 80 years. So they're going to have to have some kind of meat. They have tang and lab grown meat. <laughs> lab -grown meat. That's how it is. I don't want it. I, I want, either. I want yeah, me a good steak. Uh, and that side of the world was so much better than here. You could just tell the difference yeah. in the meat. And yeah. this was just, Europe. this wasn't Italy. This was Europe and France. And I was like, there is such a difference that I didn't know existed out there compared to the stuff we have Huge. here. So yeah. if they can protect that, I'm all for it. Even in their wine, like they don't use preservatives in their wine like we do here in the yeah, U.S. And, 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 and sulfates and that sort of thing too. There. Yeah. Lizzo, she says she is quitting the music industry just months after she was accused she? of harassment and body shaming in a lawsuit filed by her backup dancers. The 35-year-old singer posted Posted a statement to her Instagram saying in part that she's tired of being dragged by everyone on the internet, adding that all she wanted to do was make music and make people happy. Well, the four-time Grammy winner, whose body positive messaging helped her star rise, concluded with, I didn't sign up for this, I quit. In a bombshell lawsuit filed last July, Lizzo's former dancers claimed that they were fired while a third resigned over the artist's stunning behaviors. More of Lizzo's former collaborators backed up the dancer's claim about her fat shaming dancers and harassing them. Lizzo denied all the allegations, calling them false and unbelievable, and it's 
unfortunate that she's leaving the business because she's kind of like, all right, well, yeah, I can understand she's tired of dealing with that, but then also you're giving up the fight. You're, you know, you're letting them win if, if, if per se, if, 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 if you want to look at it that manner. Still, I don't think, uh, I, everybody says they're always going to quit. They mm -hmm. seem to somehow always come back, so I don't think that that'll be She'll be able to come back to her before you know it. 100%. Did you see the interview she did with David Letterman? I, I, uh, no, I did not. It's, no, it's no, pretty no. interesting, and she plays Parts the flute. Yeah. Oh, wow. um, but, you know, she has a fascinating story, and obviously she's been at this for a long time, so you think if somebody had worked that hard to get to this point, that they would try and treat other people with the same kind of respect. I mean, who knows, you know, what's true and what's not. Right, but, right. I mean, I'm sure there might be a little ounce of truth, or maybe it's somebody's feelings were too Th sensitive. There's a lot of People saying that this happened and generally mm -hmm. in droves, kind of there's got to be some Could truth, be truth in it, somewhere in, in, in there, right? Yeah. I don't want to accuse her of anything. More flash coming up right after this. Uh, welcome back. Time for us to jump into the parenthood. As our lives become increasingly digital, parents are struggling with the challenge of managing screen time for their children. Joining us now is parenting expert, Catherine Celery. She's got some great advice, as she always does, on how to actually strike a balance between embracing technology and maintaining those conscious parents' principles. Catherine, we love having you on your show. Welcome back. I, I wanna get through Thank these you. points that you have because this is a major, major problem. You have four major points you mm -hmm. wanna discuss. I wanna jump right into it. Mindful tech integration. All right, does that yeah. mean I need to know where my kid's stuff is at? Well, you know, let's see. So you've got to consider when your child comes to you asking for, whether it's the phone, the computer, the entertainment system, what's going on inside of them. Uh -huh. So say your child approaches you asking for their first phone and before you shoot them down, you have a conversation about why they want the phone. So for a child, a cell phone can be a lot of vital socialization outside of school. Children without them can feel left out. So cell phones not only can be a security blanket for overly anxious kids, allowing them to reach out with their family if they need support or guidance. It's also part of being a part of the group. Okay. So this conversation is an excellent time to practice identifying the difference between I just want it versus what's the need? What okay. is the need that they're trying to meet by using the phone it, is so it, that you can get clear? Meaning like, oh, my friends have one. I want to talk to them. Well, is that, well you can still go over to their so, house and play. I mean, is there that kind of justification? It's a solution to meeting that need. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, that so there sense. are lots of ways to meet the need for connection. This is one of them. All right. It makes a lot of sense. Second uh, point you're saying is tracking harmful behavior, either getting done to them or maybe what they're doing. What do you mean by that? Yeah, both of those, exactly. We know it's a, you know, it's a whole wild world out there. And lots of phone have, you know, have built within them downloadable apps yeah. that you can track their usage, their activity. And depending on the age of your child, some even offer the ability to limit certain functions, sites, communication. So these features paired with open communication about why maybe they're spending too much time on their device and why that can be harmful to them these are all tools that parents can use to check in periodically on the child's behavior, online, otherwise. And it serves as a great segue to explaining responsibilities yeah. for using technology, the dangers it can have. But of course, as you know, we gotta be careful about the power over thing and activating the proverbial three R's, retaliation, rebellion, and resistance. Which we've talked about before here a on lot. the show. So yeah. yeah. And you say that healthy boundaries, you've got to set those. And are we talking time or what they say or do or all of that as well? All of it, exactly. Yeah. yeah, so it can be difficult to set those boundaries that are enforceable with your child and you're always going to want to do it together. So it starts by considering your children's needs, the feelings, that's our first step. Then you engage them in decision-making together on limits around screen time, co-creating tech-free zones in your house, scheduling family screen time or screen free time and modeling all the healthy tech habits that you want them to take. I mean, obviously we need to be mindful of our own tech habits, right? Because right. we're the model for them. So maybe one idea is that you have, if you have a few kids, one of them each night could be the arbiter of technology at the dinner table. <laughs> okay. And this child, I mean, it's actually a great idea. This child can then decide if someone else's technology use is adding to the group taking away from the group. It engages everybody in critical thinking and conversation about this huge issue, but it allows them to share with everybody at the table, the whole family, you know, focusing on technology, being closed off because of technology. So all of this is such a great mindful way 
to have a relationship with your kids around screens, you, you, promoting you, a stronger bond, shared activities, open communication, everything. And, and, and you know, I, what I love about what you had just said is the fact that, okay, so if one person's the, the, the moderator or whatever, when it's the next day, they're gonna respect that same decision because they're, they're the ones like, all right, I know what it's like to be in that position to turn it down. And, and I love that idea. And it gives them that power and understanding all at the same time. I love that, great. Totally. Always great advice. Totally. Finally, you say digital citizenship, something I never had to worry about when I was a kid. What's digital citizenship? I know me either. <laughs> <laughs> so, did, yeah, you're introducing this idea that, you know, because of this device, you really are a digital citizen. And they understand if you give them some support around this and guidance about that, you know, this whole idea. So you can propose to them that their device is a passport to the digital world. Okay. And that it's a privilege that comes with rights, but also consequences if the laws of the nation are not respected. So for example, their citizenship could be revoked. And this can be a great analogy to explain the impact of their digital footprint, help them engaging with technology in mindful, informed ways. While they're responsible for their own actions online, the same way they are in real life, it's important to reassure them that if they ever feel at risk, yeah. you're here to support them and keep them safe no matter what, which is why not using rewards and punishments is so important because we don't want to jeopardize right. that trusting communication openness. We want to deal with the problems, but not in ways that are going to activate retaliation, rebellion and resistance. And, and you know, I love you saying, you know, in this citizenship, we have a social contract, if you will, of how we're supposed to act, yeah. you know, around real people. Somehow that gets thrown out the door when it comes to digital and they think they can say and do whatever. That would encompass that. And, and I picked that up from what you had said is just the fact that, okay, um, if you are, if you would act this way in real life, would you do it online? And a lot of times it, they don't match at all. So I can it's totally understand It's really that. becoming a huge thing. There's a sense of an invisibility cloak. Like, because it's digital, you can't see me. Therefore, my behavior may change. Yeah. When it, in reality, the person on the receiving end, whether you're invisible or not invisible, is having the impact of your words and actions. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. And I think it's a different screen time. Like, um, you know, you almost kind of wish the TV, we didn't have the, the cell phone, because the TV, at least you knew they were in the front room watching it. You can monitor it better. But now, like you said, exactly. with your iPads and everything, they can be anywhere and doing that. They could be anywhere with anyone. Goodness, it's, yeah. it's really, it's a huge world. We have to be really thinking about a lot, parents. All right. Dr. or Catherine, thank you so much. You're my, you're my doctor. You're so I welcome. Talk to you. uh, freeparentingbook.com, Conscious Parenting Revolutions, what it's all about. And this is so important. Thank you so much for actually uh, discussing this. And of course, you at home can join us on our website. If you want to watch this interview all over again, go to dailyflashshow.com. Let's check in now with Tony Toscano to find out what's coming out of Hollywood and straight to your screen, no matter what size you're gonna watch it on. With the latest, here's Tony. Thanks, Mitch. Streaming on Peacock is the redemption drama, Bosco. If freedom's a state of mind, I guess my dream should be enough. Just think about how much better your kid's gonna be without you around. Bosco, he gonna grow up. Based on the story of Quante Bosco Adams, sentenced to 35 years for attempted possession of marijuana, he escapes to see his daughter, but is forced to take responsibility for his past. I chatted with Quante Adams and actor Aubrey Joseph, who plays him in the film. What strikes me is that after all of this, you've managed not only to keep your humanity, but your sense of humor. Yeah, you have to have that or else you go insane, right? <laughs> Or maybe right. I am crazy a little bit, right? <laughs> I think it's, it's something in there for every uh, everyone, you know. I think it speaks to, you know, our, our people, but it, but it speaks to everyone, you know what I mean? I think it's just, at the end of the day, it's a redemption story, and it's it's really showing, like, how much of a hero that, that Bosco was, you know what I mean? Like, he was willing to do anything, despite his circumstances, to get home to his daughter. Bosco is a heartfelt and powerful statement about allowing yourself to overcome mistakes and the power of self-healing. Again, you can check out Bosco streaming on Peacock. He gets a B and is rated TVMA. In selected theaters is the new family comedy, Popular Theory. Welcome to high school. Where's the rabbit when we finish? 
is acted out on a daily basis. In other words, popularity is all that matters. Me. Are you lost? That's me. Growing up, I didn't have many friends. I had science. You spend every weekend by yourself. No more science. So just do science in my head. I'll know if you're doing science in your head. You're doing it right now, aren't you? Erwin is a girl genius and the youngest student in high school. She's struggling with social isolation when she meets fellow science guru Winston. The two team up to invent a chemical that changes high school hierarchy forever. I chatted with series stars Cheryl Hines and Sophia Reed Gansert. You either connect with it in, in the way that when you were young or as an adult, you're watching somebody young go through it and you're, tr you're trying to help them and you're doing everything you can, but it's probably not right. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, this, this movie and this character really helped me grow like personally and realize like, you know, you don't, you don't need to change yourself to find friends. And it's the exact opposite. Like you need to stay, you need to say how, you know, how you want to act and what jokes you want to make in order to find the right people. Popular theory is a throwback to those breezy family films of the 1960s and 70s. The film is lighthearted and a good pick for a family movie night. Again, popular theory is playing in selected theaters and gets a B. It's rated PG. For The Daily Flash, I'm film critic Tony Toscano. Welcome to your daily digits today. Your first digit is 8 million. That's how much someone paid for some used sneakers. Believe me, it wasn't me, unfortunately. Someone paid $8 million for six pairs of Air Jordans, one apiece from the last games of the 91, 92, 93, 96, 97, and 98 championship series. They sold out last week and in a Sotheby's auction dubbed the Dynasty Collection. Sotheby's didn't identify the buyer and described the seller only as a private American collector who right. obtained them from a longtime Bulls executive. So, unfortunately, I didn't get them stuff. Next up, we're going to talk about some monkey business. That's about 30,000 worth of monkey business, and there is some backlash. A plan was established for the largest monkey breeding facility in the U.S., which would allow 30,000 monkeys to roam within um, outfitted warehouses in Georgia. Residents, however, aren't so sure about how secure the facility would be, and they worry about the primates getting out and spreading disease. Also, animal rights groups are calling for the plan to be scrapped, arguing that breeding primates for medical tests is cool and provides little benefit in coming up with the new treatments for humans due to the differences in species. That sounds horrible if any of them get out. And your final number today is 36 million, and I hope this wasn't you. A missed deadline meant someone in Florida lost out on $36 million. You got to check your tickets, people. No one stepped up to claim the prize from uh, August before the deadline, making the ticket void. The winning ticket was purchased at a Publix in Jacksonville, Florida. The law requires that 80% of the unclaimed funds be transferred to a trust fund for education, even though Florida's not that great with education, with the remainder being held for the prize pool according to the state lottery. And trust me, I used to have stacks and stacks, a lot of tickets, but I made an effort once a month to at least go run those through the machine. Mitch, you got anything like that laying around? By our door, there is some uh, lottery tickets there, and I want to grab one because don't they? Yeah, they have like a little what do they call it? like a little scanning thing, and they'll scan, and they, they have it on the app now, so you don't even have to go to Seven. Oh, really? Yeah, well, that's definitely gonna have to do that. Yeah, you know, I'll probably be doing that after I get home. Matt, thanks for those daily digits. More Flash coming up after this. This is Daily Flash with your hosts Andrea Jackson and. Mitch English, trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash. Hi, everyone. I'm Andrea Jackson. I'm Mitch English, welcoming you to Daily Flash. We're so glad to have you here on this Thursday here. Crazy stuff that uh, happened to Angie Harmon from Law & Order uh, fame and uh, her, her shows. She was at her home in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, Instacart, you know, where they yeah. deliver stuff to the house. And the guy came, and the, she has this dog. It's a, a German Shepherd and Beagle. <gasps> the guy says he atta the dog attacked <gasps> him. He had a gun on him and no. shot him. No. Oh, no. 
And the no. unfortunate part is, you know, we always say, uh, well, there's cameras everywhere. She had a ring doorbell charging at the time so that she didn't get any video of it. No. They never found any scratches or anything on the oh. dog, uh, on the uh, on the delivery driver, guy. the delivery guy. And they're all, and now Instacart has suspended this guy and said we have zero tolerance. But they're like, why do you have a gun? You know, uh, why yeah. are you carrying a gun around with you? Uh, I would imagine he would probably say for his safety, but even still, isn't that crazy? Oh and you look at the dog. Gosh. I mean, look at the, this is the dog. That, that's oh. just a sweet little, uh, oh. it's a German Shepherd How Beagle mix. Heartbreaking. Can you imagine that right there in front of your house on Easter a weekend? Oh my so, God. Any of those Dodge delivery service things, I, I mean, I never did Instacart. I did uh, Uber Eats for a little bit, dropping that off. And in the thing, it says you can't have a weapon. No, on, and really. yeah. No. I just, you know, okay, I just don't get it. I don't understand why, why somebody would do that. If you see a dog and it's, it's scaring you, wouldn't your first reaction be to run, not shoot yeah, at it? Yeah, automatically. And this is what the dog. This is what I'm saying. Oh so I, you can see, like, God. if it was a, like, if he felt like it was a Doberman or maybe like a Rottweiler. This is a sweet little dog. We're going outside the gate and leave it at the end of the street. Or this something. is from people.com. Like, by the way, I'm not coming out. Come get your own food. That's horrible. Yeah, so our thoughts go out to Angie Herman and her. I mean, oh it's, goodness. wow. Just, I mean, what, what, that to me, you're like, why? why? You know, or why didn't, you know, you at least scream or let me do something to help. It, you yeah, it, it does make you think twice about a lot of these delivery services. You know, we hear a lot of these stories coming out. At, at, they're a great convenience, but then there's also situations like yeah. this that pop up and you think, is it really worth it for me to have my groceries delivered to my <laughs> it'll house? it make you think twice, Yeah. For sure. Well, Florida will have one of the country's most restrictive social media bans for minors under a new bill. The bill will ban social media accounts for children under 14 and require parental permission for 14 and 15-year-olds. Supporters in Florida hope the bill will withstand legal challenges because it would ban social media formats based on addictive features such as notification alerts and autoplay videos rather than on their content. Several states have considered similar legislation. There are so many tricks that the uh, social media folks do, especially Facebook, who comes out and uh, they note it. And, you know, you're like, why would they care about me? But it's basically computers that can do everything. These algorithms. It's like, well, Mitch hasn't signed on for a while. We could send him an email saying, hey, uh, you know, uh, Andrea just posted something, you know, to kind of lure you back in. And that's how they do when they, as far as addicted, because it's that FOMO. Mm -hmm. People are afraid of missing out on things. And at that age, they don't get it. Do you find yourself like I find myself sometimes mindlessly scrolling. You get, you just start and you just don't stop. And it's just crazy when you stop and think about it. I'm like, I got to get off this thing. Like there's nothing really in here that I need to know or see. And you, it's my spouse that reminds me. You know, you've been <laughs> on that thing for like an hour. I go, I have? Really? Because you do lose uh, time yeah. altogether. It, I, I think it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see how they police it, number one. Yeah. And then how they're going to be able to keep 14-year-olds off of social media altogether. I wonder if you start charging a fee, you know, if that makes a difference. I think that would make a huge difference because I we look at Twitter, uh, you know, they had they said it's gonna be a fee base and a lot of people left because of it. So maybe that might be the thing. We're going out to some international news. Looks like Italy's government is Move to actually ban the production of lab-grown meat. It's all in an effort to protect Italian culture and its agriculture sector. The company became the first in Europe to ban artificial meat. Factories who produce lab-grown meat will face fines up to about $162,000. New guidelines, also like cauliflower steaks, are also off the menu as the country also, also moved to ban the use of meat-related words to market vegetarian mm -hmm. products, which uh, I love my cauliflower pizza crust. Yes. Okay, it's really good. Cauliflower yes. is a great thing. But people, you're not going to get the same amount of protein or, I guess, the types of protein mm -hmm. that you're going to get like in real meat. And then lab-grown meat is really scary because it literally starts in a Petri yeah, dish. Not you into know? that. And, uh, no, I don't want anything mm -hmm. to do with it, but it is coming. And if they can ban it off on it, maybe they won't make any money and it won't get bigger and Let's bigger. Let's hope. I'm cross my Come on, Italy. Hey, welcome back to Daily Flash. I'm Mitch English. They have fought for our freedom all across the world, shielded America from enemies, not only foreign but domestic. But today, veterans are in a different fight. It's a fight to own a home. And due to the new rules and lawsuits against the National Association of Realtors, veterans are blocked from paying broker fees right now. So joining us to talk about it is the founder of Veteran PCS, Jason Anderson. Jason, thank you so much for joining us uh, today. It, it, this is a huge issue. But first off, let's kind of set up the stage of what it, what's happening. What's the current rule set by the VA actually regarding broker commissions for veteran home buyers? Yeah, good morning, Mitch. The VA uh, has a guide or a handbook, a pamphlet that 
really says in chapter eight, very clearly under its rules and policies regarding VA loans that under no circumstance should a veteran purchaser pay for any sort of broker compensation or broker fee. And it states that this is not intended or they do not see that this would harm the veteran purchaser in any way. And does the uh, National Association of Realtors, they're wanting to change those rules just to benefit the buyers? How does that actually help them? Or tell us about that. The This would align with the entire lawsuit where it aims to make commissions more negotiable and better understood. So changing this and allowing a broker compensation if a veteran purchaser chooses to have representation rolled into the VA loan, much like a VA funding fee is, would give more options whether the buyer may pay that broker compensation or, again, still the seller may pay, but it does give more options to that veteran purchaser. And how do those changes uh, to these rules actually align with NAR's efforts to support those veterans and maybe even giving them access to ownership? Yeah, the efforts really align, again, with this equitable housing market. So if there are other competition in a market, say where I'm at, like in Colorado Springs, where there are either cash offers or there's conventional loans where those uh, purchasers are paying for their own commission, but a veteran purchaser otherwise would not be able to pay for their own representation, leaving them either going unrepresented, buying a home, or being outbid or outcompeted by these other purchasers. So it really would create a more equitable system where they have the option to pay for their own bro broker compensation. I, I think you kind of hinted to it, but uh, there are some actual impacts and maybe potential impacts that actually could those proposed rule changes really have on real estate industry, uh, maybe even the housing market as a whole together. Will this affect maybe the things outside of what we're dealing with right now? Yeah, a couple of the ways that I see, I think there's there can be positive benefits for sure of again, giving more options to veteran purchasers if they choose to have compensate or uh, representation and compensate for that through the VA loan. But I could also see some negative impacts, much like we've seen predatory practices on the military community. If there is a certain max commission that is allowed, if people start to see that with the military community and say, oh, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start representing military clients because mm -hmm. there's commission attached to it, we could see predatory practices I see. creeping into the real estate representation. And, and if it, how can we make sure that this kind of helps out our veterans? Is there something we contact our, our lawmakers? Or is there a vote coming up or anything like that? Uh, it would be a lot of education and that lobbying for it. So, you know, there's this is in the works with the VA and there's been talks about it. Uh, so the more voices that speak up about it and again, giving the option for veteran purchasers to be able to do that is is very helpful. But ultimately, education for the military community around how this looks and how it works with the VA loan and with yeah. broker compensation is going to be vital. I think you're absolutely right. And, you know, these are the people that gave their lives uh, for our country, you know, really are, you know, willing to help actually make America better. We need to pay them back as well. Thank you so much. You want more information about how the VA affects veterans' access to home buying, you can go to our website, dailyflashshow.com. There you'll find some links as well as this interview as well. More Flash after this. Thank you, Jason. If you are struggling with health coverage for your children, here's information that can help. Over 4 million children have lost their Medicaid coverage. The biggest concerns about children losing their health insurance are potential health risks and financial strain on vulnerable households. Medicaid plays a vital role in ensuring children can access preventive care as well as management of chronic conditions, all crucial for healthy childhood development. If you're unsure about your child's eligibility or have received notices of disenrollment, contact your local Medicaid agency today. Learn more at localhelp.healthcare.gov. Earth Month is here, and it's time to raise environmental awareness. So you got to have somebody that people love to look at and actually does a great job what he does. And joining us with some Earth-friendly advice is film, TV, and Broadway star Tay Diggs. Thanks for joining us, Tay. Thanks for having me. Now, how did you actually get involved with uh, Earth Month movement as well as True Earth? Uh, I have to say it was almost by accident because... Uh... Uh, the environment, I have to say, was not, uh, you know, on uh, on my list of priorities. But uh, once I teamed up with True Earth and they told me how easy it is to uh, 
to make a difference, I couldn't help, uh, I couldn't help but, but jump on board. Um, when it comes to washing clothes, uh, uh, everybody's used to the big plastic uh, containers. And as everyone knows, that's not so great for the environment. Uh, Pure Earth has come up with these little strips that you can uh, pull out of the plastic, one strip per load, throw it in the laundry, and, uh, and there you have it. So uh, once I realized how easy it was, uh, I became more aware of uh, other ways that we can, we can help the planet. Uh, that's wow. That's interesting stuff there. Um, what about you know making a difference? Do you have any other tips, maybe just even small changes that maybe we can do to reduce maybe our, our carbon blueprint? It's funny you should ask. I do, um, and the, this made a difference to me because uh, um, I was one of those people that very quickly just said I'm not. I'm not one of those people, so I just ignored it. But uh, but you know, just ignoring a problem doesn't make it go away. So once I realized how easy it was. Um, I felt better. I felt, excuse me. I felt better. I felt better about myself around the kitchen. I didn't know that composting makes a big difference. So that's something that you can easily do to make a difference. Um, uh, embracing uh, reusable containers is huge. Um, uh, around the kitchen, when you're scrubbing your counters, uh, using towels as opposed to napkins or or bounty, little things like that can make a really big difference. And uh, that made a big difference for someone like me. So I just want, I want other people to know it's not as difficult as it may seem. Wow, loving that. Now listen, hey, you're part of that campaign with True Earth. Tell us a little bit about the video you shot and where can folks go if they want more info? I'm very uh, proud. We shot a cheeky campaign. Uh, people can go to true.earth to uh to check it out um we are promoting obviously the eco strips and i do a little stripping myself if you get my drift uh so yeah go to true.earth uh, for any inquiries and and other ways you can help the environment and check out that campaign jay thanks so much and the ladies thank you for doing that video as well uh calm down andrea uh, again, if you want to check out that full video in this interview as well, you can head to our website, dailyflashshow.com. Mothers Against Prescription Drug Abuse, in partnership with Aleve, have launched a campaign called The Painful Truth to encourage consumers to explore non-addictive pain relief options. Here's more. It's important that we know that approximately every 30 minutes in America, we lose somebody to a prescription opioid overdose. Now, it's important to understand that opioids come with certain risks, whether it's addiction or abuse or the loss of life. But yet, prescription opioids are still more widely prescribed here in the United States than anywhere else in the whole world. And it's also important to know that if you are taking a prescription opioid for pain management or if you're offered one, there's a potential that you might become addicted to them. We're fortunate to live in a time where there are many options. We've come a long way. There are good, effective options out there that are not a prescription opioid. And I think what's important to realize that as a country, we used to be in denial about this problem and we're beyond that. And so it's time patients simply talk to their doctors and ask for an option to their prescription opioid that they might be offered. Please visit us at uh, leave.com slash the painful truth. And now we have some ways to help you keep your brain nice and healthy. A recent survey by the McKnight Brain Research Foundation found that many Americans worry about memory loss and decline in brain function and think these changes are outside of their control. Evidence shows that there are lifestyle modifications that may help people protect their brain health now and in the future. We created the BrainWorks Optimize Your Brain Span campaign to educate the public about cognitive aging and the steps people can take to keep their brains healthy with age. Learn more at mcnightbrain.org slash brainworks. Next up, we got one cell phone provider who wants to show some love to his customers. Check this out. February is a month dedicated to love, but Verizon's love for its customers extends throughout the entire year. That's why customers get the best network and exclusive value they can't get anywhere else. We are always listening to our customers, and they want control and flexibility with their plans. My plan from Verizon gives you the ability to pick and choose the perks you want, like Netflix and Max for just $10. Save on every one and change anytime. No penalties or fees. 
At Verizon, we're all about connecting people to each other and what they love most. And for a limited time, you could get a new 5G phone on us when you trade in an eligible phone in any condition with a new line on Unlimited Ultimate with our reliable, fastest 5G, double mobile hotspot data, and more. Some restrictions will apply. Visit verizon.com slash myplan or head to your local Verizon store. So we talk about bridezillas here on the show. Bridezillas are the worst, <laughs> Every yes. once in a while. There's a story that's been trending online about this gal that went to a wedding, and she was dating uh, a family member's guy, a brother <laughs> a brother of the groom, or brother, brother of the bride, let's say. Okay. So they show up to the wedding. She hasn't met any of the family, right? This is kind of her first time meeting everyone involved. So she goes up to someone at the wedding who's wearing a white dress, and she just said, hey, I just want to congratulate you on getting married. This is great. Well, the real bride was standing just within earshot. She heard her identify the wrong woman as the bride and had a complete meltdown. <laughs> she ended up bursting into tears and crying over this woman identifying the wrong bride. Get at over the it. Ceremony. Yeah. Too much stress at a wedding, if you ask me. This is Tim. Tim is all about time. And if you've ever had a chance to look into Tim's cold, dead eyes, you'll see that it's time for you to follow us on social media. Sure, there's 10,000 social sites out there, and we don't have the time to name them all. Seriously, just ask Tim. So take the time to look for Daily Flash TV on your favorite social sites and start following us. That's all the time, Tim. Goodbye. Hey, welcome back to Daily Flash. If you're one of the millions on a weight loss medication or maybe even thinking about talking to your doctor about using one, you definitely want to hear this. It's great to be here. Thanks for having us. GLP-1s are the newer class of appetite suppressing medications, which act as a hard reset of sorts for those dealing with imbalances or an unhealthy state. But as Chief Medical Officer of LifeMD, I've seen that long-term weight loss is much more than just about shedding pounds. It's about creating a balanced and fulfilling life where all aspects of your health, mental, physical, and social, can thrive. And these medications, they serve as a safe and effective tool for that reset. But there is a recognition within the medical community that they're just one tool. A lot of patients on a medically supported weight loss journey will benefit from two important things, the tools and the support to create a healthier lifestyle. Optavia has helped many develop a healthy lifestyle. It's because it's based in habit creation, but more importantly, it's guided by a coach and a community. Now, when you're on a medically supported weight loss journey, it's important to incorporate healthy eating habits because your appetite might be decreased on the medications. Evidence also suggests that the loss of lean body mass can range from 20 to 50% of your total weight loss. This is a big deal because muscle supports our everyday life. So to combat that muscle loss that often accompanies weight loss with the medically supported weight loss, it's important to incorporate a nutrition plan that is adequate in both protein and other key nutrients. Our research also shows that most people, they know incorporating a healthy lifestyle is important, yet few only 17% are confident that they can do it on their own. We found that people tend to be more successful when they incorporate the support of an Optavia coach and a community of people going through similar journeys. So for more information, you can head on over to optavia.com lifestyle, and there you'll find more information on our products, our coaching, and how a healthy lifestyle program can complement medically supported weight loss. We definitely thank you for uh, letting us be in your life today. Well, pretty yeah. nice. For more information on any of today's stories, be sure to visit our website, dailyflashshow.com. All right, we'll be back in just 23 short hours. Y'all be good <laughs> or good at it, and we'll see you when we look at you. Bye-bye, everybody.